Hello and good morning. This is KTN News. Many thanks for joining us on the Morning Prime this morning. It is fairly 6 a.m. We bring you up to date the current affairs. Looking at our social media platforms, we are up and running. Our links at KTN News across all the social media platforms. You can find me at Doris Anki on X, Anki Doris Mbat on Facebook. Looking at the dailies this morning, we'll bring you up to speed on the front page of each key daily this morning. Besides that, we'll also bring you the latest updates from the news desk. But very essential right now is the Petroleum and, of course, Energy and Petroleum Reg like Regulatory Authority reviewing the fuel prices. Is it a reprieve for you? Let us know in the comment sections across board. But also importantly, is the doctor's strike. One of its own kind was first seen in the year 2017. But how long will this go? 33 days into it. We'll bring you more updates, essentially getting engaged with you on the same. Well, let's start this show with the headlines. Looking at the standard this morning, as you can see, nation set on early campaign mode. That is our own production right here at Sat, uh, Standard Media. And what is being brought in forth is that um, leaders aiming to emulate William Ruto, who campaigned for five years, are fomenting dis disaffection rather across counties, giving governors hard time. Will it be a poisoned chalice or blessing in disguise for the country? That is on page eight of the Standard this morning, but also very key to notice right at the top of the daily, we shall come for you. Dr. Stell IG on Demos, we shall come for you. More of that on the national page six, but on the world page 21, on the standard, Iran attacks Israel in new world crisis. And also on the sports page 29 this morning on the standard, Obiri Chebet's big day in Boston. We wish them all the best. But also, like I mentioned earlier on, very key right now in Matters Economy, relief as fuel prices drop for fifth month. In Matters Economy, prices of fuel continued to drop yesterday by a margin of between 5 shillings and 18 shillings, providing much needed relief to citizens battling hard times. Page 19 has that in detail, but in a nutshell, we're looking at uh, 18 shillings drop in cost of kerosene, the biggest margin bringing the pump price to 170 shillings and 6 cents per litre in Nairobi. 10 shillings, diesel reduced by 10 shillings and will for the next one month retail at 180 shillings a litre in Nairobi. 167 shillings is the retail price for a litre of diesel. A year ago, while petrol was 179 shillings in the capital city. But 193 shillings, 84 cents, the new pump price for super petrol in Nairobi, a decline of 5 shillings and 31 cents. So far, while prices have come down to under 200 shillings a litre across most towns, it is still over 200 shillings a litre in Marsabit, while in Liboy it will cost 202 shillings, Moyale 203 shillings and 97 cents, and WAC will have it still retaining at 205 shillings and 34 cents. Wajia will have it retailing at 203 and, of course, uh, 78 cents. Mandera, 207 shillings, 84 cents. And finally, Lokichogyo will still have uh, the petrol, super petrol rather, uh, still retailing at 201 shillings. Now, so far, there's an impact here. And according to President William Ruto, the dollar was 160 shillings. Now it's 120 something and still not done. What is the effect so far? Let us know at uh, KTN News across board on these same headlines. But also very important is uh, the killing rise as Corona's office still in limbo. That is on page 10. And on page 7, no pension trustees yet for state workers also making headlines on the standard this morning. Let's take a look at the front page of the Daily Nation. All right, we'll be looking at the front page of the Daily Nation quickly once we get that on board. But remember to also keep being part of the conversation at KTN News on all our social media platforms. Now, on the Daily Nation, politics of term limits taking center stage this morning. And of course, too young to retire is the question. The renewed calls for President William Ruto to rule for more than the 10 years spelled out in the Constitution have reignited the politics of term limits in the country with proponents arguing that two terms are not enough for a president to make any meaningful change. 
but opponents say such reckless talk should never be entertained. More of that on pages four and five. Where will that then lead the country? And as far as politics is concerned, we'll engage the panelists this morning on the same. But going to the world news, as covered on the Daily Nation's front page, what Middle East escalation means for Kenya? Looking at different countries just highlighted in that particular map, including Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Gaza, and Jordan. We're looking at key players in the conflict so far, Joe Biden, the US president, who says leaders say his country will not take part in retali uh, retaliatory attacks against Iran. In fact, President Biden is firm on that matter. But the Iranian leader, Ibrahim Raisi, has said Iran launched the attack over a suspected Israeli strike on its consulate in Syria on April 1st. And Netanyahu stunned the Israeli member, uh, pr uh, Prime Minister rather, saying Israeli ministers signaled yesterday that retaliation by Israel is not eminent. More of that on pages two and three of the Daily Nation. But strong shilling fuels drop in pump prices, also taking center stage on page six of the Daily Nation. And on matters football, very hot, still debated until this morning from yesterday's weekend football. Arsenal Liverpool drop precious points as title race hots up. Of course, that is on page 35 in Matters Football. But finally, on the Daily Nation's front page, there are no sacred cows in fertilizer scandal probe, says Ruto. You can find more, that, more of that on page 7. All right, that's pretty much it for the Daily Nation. Another very key daily this morning. Let us line it up for another paper. We'll be looking at the star, which essentially will also give you what we expect you to wake up to this morning on the front page of the star. Now, coming to your screen shortly, Members of Parliament want Uhuru CSS probed over 55 billion shillings payout. Looking at the front page of the star coming to your screen shortly. Members of Parliament now want Uhuru CSS probed over 55 billion payout. What you can see now is that cash spent on fuel and unga subsidy, CBC classrooms, Telcom Kenya and road projects among payments to be investigated. Move that on pages 45 of the stand of the star rather. And I will take more painful decisions to make Kenya great, says Ruto. You can see a picture of that right above the paper, and that has more details on page seven. Relief at the pump as fuel prices drop yet again. Relief at the pump as fuel prices drop again on page 11. Change in fuel prices, just put in a nutshell right there at the front page of the star as well, following closely. Petrol retailed at uh, 211 shillings and 64 cents in April 23, against what we see now. In 2024, after the review, petrol will be retailing at 193 shillings and 84 cents. Diesel retailed at 200 shillings and 99 cents in April 2023. And now after the review is uh, retailing at 180 shillings and 38 cents. And finally on kerosene in April 2023, kerosene was retailing at 200 shillings and 61 cents. And now after the review will be retailing at 170 shillings and six cents. All right, also on pages 9, 22, 25, and 2, respectively, on page uh, 9 of the Star, Tycoon defeats nephews in fight for garment farm. That is on page 9 of the Star. On page 22 and 25, that's misery as floods wreak havoc in counties. Indeed, on matters of weather, we're looking at the weatherman still talking about a little more rain to be expected across board. So remember to be very vigilant and uh, follow closely the weather forecast and the updates on the same. Let's look at um, other papers this morning and of course continuing to let you know that our panelists are in studio and we will indulge them in most of the current affairs as they continue to arise. On matters uh, People Daily, let us look at the front page of the People Daily this morning. I will crush you, Koma tells Medix, coming to your screen shortly on our paper review on the People Daily's front page. I will crush you, Koma tells Medix. Aggrieved doctors have maintained that they retain the right to picket, demanding the health ministry to honor the pay deal. But police chief warns protesters have crossed the red line. 
more of that on page nine and of course we want to hear if this has trickled down to the county levels you're watching this morning let us know what exactly is happening in your respective counties we have the latest updates as well relief at the pump as petrol and kerosene prices drop is it a relief for you but giving you images of that main story this morning on the people daily in as far as health is concerned we're seeing the voice of the police chief and medics have become a public nuisance, he says. Blowing whistles and rubuzellas during the demonstrations, thus causing discomfort to patients in hospitals and the general public. Now, this is what we're going to be looking at in a deeper, you know, uh, circumstances with the panelists this morning remember this is one of its second kind as we saw one of the major doctor strikes happening in 2017 the question here is how did the past ministries uh, of health deal with this particular issue what now is called a stalemate but as we conclude the papers this morning people daily on Marta's world news, you can see on page 17, escalation after Iran launches uh, the missiles at Israel. Seekers of Envoy jobs to know their fate on the news beat page 6. So pretty much alongside other issues you're seeing arising, the main story taking center stage this morning is on Marta Sports. I will crush you. Kome tells medics. Remember, the medics have also given him an ultimatum in as far as that conversation is concerned. All right, that's pretty much it for the papers this morning. We will be giving you the news yam also very shortly. And uh, the many things lined up this morning, but I want to quickly acknowledge the guests in the studio as we get ready to start the show with the news yam. And the news yam and the soapbox, quite interesting this morning. Do not miss any of what we have planned for you. Um, and don't forget to engage with us at KT KTN uh, News. This is the morning prime in as far as the health sector is concerned and also we will touch on politics twists and turns and what is expected thereafter thank you very much for joining us this morning i want to appreciate you for creating time to be here dr ekuru alcott party leader third way alliance good morning all right, we'll be looking forward to your sentiments. You have been very vocal on a number of issues, and uh, very shortly we will hear from you. Honorable Beatrice Alachi, Member of Parliament, Dagoretti North. Very good to see you. Good to see you. Morning. Good morning. Do I welcome you? Do you welcome us? <laughs> <laughs> we, we but, get to yeah, you. yeah, yeah. It's good, it's good. Karibu to Asante. the set, and a lot of Kenyans <laughs> are really uh, anticipating to hear your remarks. You know, let me start with... Um, because we'll be going to the news yam indeed, but let's start with just commenting on some of the front pages that we've seen this morning. You know, health <coughs> and quality health services are, are, are right. They're, they're not privileges. Let me start with Dr. Ekuru. You mm -hmm. know, you are one of the minds behind our constitution. You, you, you understand that health is not a privilege, but what we're seeing here happened last in 2017, where a number of Kenyans died. Mm -hmm. Doctors pushed into 100 days of the strike. They were firm on what they wanted. There were some agreements that were signed, which doctors today are saying have not been met. Mm -hmm. at, at least part of it have not been met. Let's start with that. There mm -hmm. is some sort of back and forth here, but mm -hmm. we have a firm constitution. Mm -hmm. what, what would be your opening remarks to this matter? First of all, I think the starting point would be that uh, we have a legally binding agreement, mm -hmm. the collective bargaining agreement signed in 70, I mean 2017 under the previous regime. Uh, where William Ruto was actually a deputy for 10 years. And so uh, many of the people now in the cabinet secretaries and all, they were all in the cabinet. If you think about, uh, say, Kindiki, I don't know about Nakomicha, but uh, you know, if you look at some of the, the cabinet secretaries, they were all in government at that time. And you know that government is, per, you know, per, is in perpetuity. So whatever that government actually agreed on and it's documented and it's legal, yeah. it should be binding uh, even on, on an oncoming government. And I think that's one of the cheapest arguments here from uh, uh, the UDA defenders, that that was under the previous regime. So basically they don't understand what government is. Uh, so there is a collective bargaining agreement, legally binding, which was adopted by a court of law as an order of the court. Uh, and therefore, the, the, the refusal, the reluctance to, con to implement that agreement, of course, confirms what we have always been fearing, that this is a government that has no respect for the judiciary, has no respect for the rule of law, has no respect for court orders. So they are confirming that. Uh, number two, if you look at any, any, any country's national security, you know, mm -hmm. national security, there are four things that stand out. Number one is health. 
Number two is education. Number three, food. Not necessarily in that order. And number four, the human security of the people. Those are the four main priorities of any country in the world. In fact, and I challenge any Kenyan to do just basic research. Look at any country in the world in terms of their national security. Health is a, is, is a, is a fundamental uh, interest, fundamental issue. In All right. and, and thirdly, related to that, if you go back to our independence, mm. the promises at independence, there were three things that were isolated as the things that we must fix in this country uh, so that Kenya then can prosper. Mm -hmm. We said we will eradicate poverty, uh, we will eradicate disease, and uh, we will eradicate ignorance. And that is education, health, and food security. Okay? All right. So unfortunately, here we have a government that is now disrespecting that uh, legally binding uh, document. The excuse is that we don't have money, mm -hmm. let's live within our means. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they are actually enlarging government. For example, through the chief administrative secretary, and I'm, and I'm happy that my member of parliament is here, Elachi, who was also a chief administrative secretary under the, the, the Jubilee administration. But if you look at the amount of money that is being paid to the chief administrative, or a year marked for chief administrative secretary, the PACs and all that, you know, it is very laughable that um, uh, you can train a, a medic for six years, sometimes even seven years, and then you want to give them a paltry 70,000. And Anki, let, let's, just, let's just break this down. I know we are, we are, we are in the heart of the debate now. Yes. If, you, if you have 70K, let's say you pay rent. I mean, after, after taxation, you probably end up with about 47, 48,000 Kenya shillings, maybe 50 or 50 something. You pay rent, say, of about 30 to live maybe in a some, somewhat decent, uh, decent location. You probably remain with something like uh, 20,000. 20, you're a medic, you're a frontline soldier. And, 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 and one of the things that I really want to demystify here today is the misunderstanding and a lot of ignorance even from the, the cabinet secretary herself when she, she, she equates a medical intern, a doctor intern, with a, 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 an intern from social sciences. And, and I'm, with time, I'm more than happy to break that down because I've done a lot of consultation mm -hmm. with doctors, relatives who are medics, and there is a complete misunderstanding around what is a medical intern. And I want you to just hold it there. We'll come back to that. I, I love that you started with a lot more detailed remarks. Let me hear from Honorable Beatrice Alachi because looking at uh, the reports, uh, Moshimiwa, doctors union have remained adamant. In fact, hundreds of doctors took part in protests. And in as far as I'm concerned and the information I have, they presented a petition to <coughs> parliament urging lawmakers to intervene in their labor dispute. Have you intervened as a parliament? What are you considering? Of course, we saw debates on the same. You tried to talk about this particular issue, uh, there were concerns, but how is it going so far in as far as the consideration around parliament and this dispute is concerned? Well, with parliament, I'll say we have let them down because we were to debate it on uh, Thursday mm -hmm. in terms of uh, it was, um, we do an adjournment of motion. Yes, we will talk about it. But uh, I, I, I remember the majority leader saying uh, the CS will be coming on Wednesday. And so that's the time people can ask those questions. Mm -hmm. And I am, you, you kill one of the things, and I think I told the speaker yesterday when mm -hmm. we were in Kipipiri, that it is very unfortunate when you kill your own house. Mm -hmm. that when we say we are joining, it's not about ranting or saying blaming. S some of us wanted to bring in a few issues to say, look, you can look for a small window okay. to sit on the table and let the president now sit on the table with them and have a discussion on how you unbundle your own CBA that you agreed on mm. in 2017. Mm -hmm. And so when we tried and pulled and pulled and I realized this is the most unfortunate thing. Because people in parliament think whenever you discuss anything, you're discussing the president, mm -hmm. which is wrong. Parliament is there also to advise the president when we feel the president is not doing right or when we feel the president might have his vision, but the CSS are not doing right. Mm. And so until we understand that, until we come back, this 13th parliament to understand mm -hmm. that we are a third arm of government, I don't know whether it's another <laughs> training that we need to go to, because it's very, very sad. And so for me, I still say, 
There was a CPAS. All right. There are many issues. It's not just about the payments and, uh, mm -hmm. and the salaries. Yeah. There are many issues. Mm -hmm. But because they've come with salaries, if government was smart enough, now you bring in these other issues and you say, look, we are agreeing with this, but we also want to see you coming into the middle to this. And so why the interns are also very, everyone knows it is the interns you find in hospital. All right? Mm -hmm. Not more than the doctors, because the doctors themselves, you'll find them with their own small clinics. Mm -hmm. Fine. Mm -hmm. Nobody is complaining. Yeah, actually Did you realize President Moy had an issue with that? Yes. At some I point also in has, the because okay. sometimes mm -hmm. it leaves uh, the patient very, very vulnerable. Okay. Uh, but that intern takes care of this patient until you'll never know, mm -hmm. you know. So that is why you find it. But at the same time, we went wrong as ourselves as a country to allow interns of a ministry of education to go through and now you come here and you say this one to know so, so, so those are some of the mistakes we also did ourselves All right. but more importantly and maybe um senior will help us mm. why did we i don't know how we lost that opportunity to give them a commission mm. Because this was one place we needed to give yeah. a commission for them to be sorting out all this. Mm -hmm. and, and you know now, uh, at the way we did for TAC, for the police, mm -hmm. this was one social sector that uh, we assumed mm -hmm. it will work well with the counties, mm -hmm. but now we've realized that okay. human resource at the county level mm -hmm. is not doing well mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And we need, th that is one subject we just need to sit down and sort it out. Because mm -hmm. this is health. Everyone believes that the doctor is number two from God mm -hmm. in terms of when I am sick. But more importantly also, I want to plead with them because uh, I, as I finalized just the other day, I walked into a hospital and very sad, it's my Catholic hospital. It's okay. on Gitanga Road, I won't say the name. Mm -hmm. And I walk in to uh, assist a young girl who had gone to Baghdadi, but because there was no doctor, Baghdadi pleaded with her you need uh, to go through a CS, and so we will have to look for a hospital. Mm -hmm. And so she goes there. And because of the pricing, she pays what she had, and she has a balance. And then I go there and I say, I'll pay, and the family will come and uh, get what they want. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, allow her, so that I become like a guarantor for mm -hmm. her, allow her to go home so that this uh, it doesn't accumulate, mm -hmm. and it will... Up to today, as we speak, I am like, what hospital now is, if this is a mission hospital, what about now? The yes. others? It's, it? it's very sad, because I thought a mission hospital will have some little sense of understanding, and nobody is running away, or, and it is in my constituency, and I'm like, I am standing in. It is very sad when you see that. Talking about how sad it is, Kenyans, I just want to appreciate you and ask you to send in your feedback as well. Let us know what exactly is happening where you are. That experience you have had will help uh, this conversation and inform this conversation from a point of information. Allow me to acknowledge the presence of uh, Dr. Makali Mulu, Member of Parliament, uh, Kitui Central. Thank you very much for creating time. In fact, I hope you have also interacted with the front page of the People Daily that reads, I will crush you. Kome now tells the medics. We're looking at a deeper <laughs> back and forth here, Dr. Tari. Yeah, sure. What would be opening remarks? I'm sure you've had the panelists' opening remarks. Are you um, in line with the, either of the lines of thought? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Andy. It's good to see you. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> After many days. <laughs> I'm good to see my friend, Dr. Tari. Thanks, Dr. Okay. It's been years, eh? Absolutely. Many, <laughs> many years. <laughs> At least uh, Moshimua is my, I will call her my seatmate. We sit in the <laughs> same corner in parliament, so I see her most of the time. Yes, it's a good morning, and I've heard what my colleagues have said. Mm -hmm. I can't agree more. The, the issue of our doctors, I think, has gotten serious misrepresentation from the government side. Uh, because, like uh, Moshimua Racho was saying, uh, Honorable Dr. Nikal had requested for a motion of adjournment on, on uh, was it Thursday? Yeah, I think that's... When we were targeting to, to have at least one hour mm -hmm. as parliament to debate this matter. And I remember normally when a member uh, presents a motion of adjournment, they will always get their way out and we have one hour, one hour and a half to discuss the matter. But this time, uh, for unknown reasons, 
we wasn't able to get that opportunity so that we, as a house, we actually uh, uh, de debate this matter. And uh, we was told it would be happening, I think, tomorrow, Tuesday. But as you can see, I think the government, the government is just undermined. And they don't want this matter discussed by Kenya. The government is undermined. The government is undermined. So that's, that, in short, that's, that's the, 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 the summary of the issue. Uh, and you can see when, when the minister talks, when the president talks, they, they, they are trying to, to come up with roadblocks to make sure that the matter is not sorted. I don't know what reason. Uh, and I, the way I look at it is, you know, the other day, yesterday I was in a, uh, a, a function somewhere in our county. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, when you analyze this matter, it's very unfortunate. Because I can tell you, you and all of us on this table, we, we have medical cover through our insurance. Mm -hmm. And if you are sick, you can walk to Nairobi hospital, you can walk to Akakan, you can walk to any hospital, and you get treated. But just ask yourself, so this, this issue of doctor strike, mm -hmm. who is it affecting most? If you ask that question, you realize it is, it is the voter at the lowest level of the, our... Let's our, just call it the hustler. Yeah, the hustler. The ones who are promised. Uh, and, and this is the hustler who was promised that uh, yeah. when, when, when you get this seat, you'll be able to cross from Misri to Canaan. Mm. I don't know whether in the middle of the sea somewhere or they, <laughs> they're drowning. Or they are still, or, or they are still in Misri. <laughs> uh, and these are the issues. And we are saying as a country, when you hear the issue of that uh, we don't have a budget to meet this, or, or it's going to blow... Uh, the, out uh, the wage bill, you, you ask yourself, out of the public service of about a million, because you are about a million public servants, what percentage is the, are the doctors? Even when you look at the history of this country, though yes. we have been uh, getting doctors out of our universities, uh, other than just the last three or four years, when we have now new, many universities offering this, 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 uh, this uh, medicine degree. This is the only Nairobi University with only 100 mm. uh, doctors. Well, no other degrees were getting out in hundreds of uh, thousands uh, of them. Mm -hmm. so, so it means even if you just look at what percentage uh, they contribute to the wage bill in this country, it will be something very low. So you can't really tell the doctors that uh, you are blowing the wage bill. And I, I'm sure we'll be coming to that no, matter because... Uh, so, so, so basically what yeah. I'm saying short is, uh, I, 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 I wish we, did the, we handled this matter in a better way. People are losing lives. And, and the truth of the matter is life... In any, in, in any situation, uh, life should be protected. You know, before I let uh, Dr. Ari, you know, yeah, um, yeah. and go to Dr. Uh, uh, Ikuru, you said something that might need us to, you know, dig a little deeper when you said that uh, the government is intentionally mm -hmm. uh, building, okay. you know, seemingly roadblocks yes. to getting a solution. Perhaps you could just tell us further what you mean by this. What are these vivid roadblocks you have identified as a member of parliament that the government seemingly is putting? What I'm saying is this. Look at the, the, the CBA. It was negotiated 2018. 2017. 2017 yes. by a government. You know, governments never cease to exist. Mm. Uh, individuals might change, mm. but the governments remain. Mm -hmm. so, so if a, a government of Kenya at some point negotiated and agreed on some specific issues to be addressed by the government, and then you come and you think you can't handle them. The best thing would be, why don't you call the same group to a round table and explain to them that this is the situation, the economic situation we are in, we may not be able to give you all the 19 requirements, because they are demanding, I think, 19. Okay. We, can, we can do one or two, three mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. and because of the, 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 what you are going through, then you can stack this in another two years, so that you get to a table and renegotiate. In a situation where you are saying it can't happen, so you are closing the doors. And, and by doing that, I don't think any serious government would want to close doors for a serious group as doctors. Mm -hmm. You can close the doors for, 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 for teachers because children will come home and will cook for them, they continue eating and uh, uh, growing more fat in the house. Okay. But, but these are people who, 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 who save us when we, when we are sick. And like uh, Honorable Raich is saying, when you are sick, you, you only have two choices. You, you are God and you. You pray that uh, God <laughs> uses you. You pray that the doctor is given the, 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 the grace mm -hmm. to treat you. All right. You know, doc, uh, you know Dr. You, know, you said they are frontline soldiers. Yes. Uh, and, and, okay, so, so first of all, let's demystify one thing. Um, you know, 
This is national security. The breakdown of healthcare anywhere in the world is national security because it's affecting lives. The very existence of a people you are governing over or you are ruling over. So if those people are going to drop down and dying, it's like, it's like a calamity. Mm -hmm. It's a disaster. You know? So you cannot play games with it. And I agree with Mwishima and Dr. here that you know, government is actually putting roadblocks. Some of those roadblocks, like you actually asked, what are they? Mm -hmm. They speak the language from the government itself. It's so deterrent. It's so discouraging. When you have um, a fellow like, uh, you know, I inspect IG, you know, these people bring a lot of disrespect to even the offices they occupy. Because when the way they speak, we have no choice but now to look down upon them. When Kome says, you know, uh, we'll come after you, that's a threat. It's a threat against the liberties and rights in Article 37 of the Constitution of Kenya, where any Kenyan can actually picket, demonstrate, demand fair administrative action from, uh, from an office. So you cannot threaten them. I had the same threat from Nakumicha that go back to work or face the music. I'm sorry to interject. The, the concern that uh, the IG has brought forth is that doctors, striking doctors to be particular, are becoming a nuisance, infringing on the rights of others by number one, <coughs> blowing whistles and vuvuzelas, disrupting smooth operations of hospitals. Of course, Kome is saying this That's will not be tolerated. And finally, he's also accused a section of the officers for sleeping on many major roads, hence affecting the normal flow of traffic. That's you not, do not think that, that's that not true. We, we haven't seen that. Okay. Where, where's the documentation for that? In fact, when doctors had a peaceful demonstration, I think was it last month, it was the same same coma who gave an order for them to tear gas. I remember seeing, uh, is it Dev, Dev G, the, the Secretary General of KM, KMPDU, you know, bloodied all over. They were just demonstrating peace, peaceably as the constitution guarantees. But it was the same, same uh, police who actually tear gas them. But, Anki, let's go to a more serious, substantive discussion right. about this issue. Our government is ignorant in so many ways. Ignorant. Ignorant. And I will defend why. You know, you go back to the Abuja Declaration, I can't remember when it was signed. The Abuja Declaration declared that we must set aside 15% of our national revenue to take care of Medicare, matters health. All other, other countries in the continent have actually done it, except Kenya. So we are, we, are, we are so quick to go sign declarations, sign treaties and agreements, but we don't actually mean uh, to, to implement them. Secondly, if you look at... Uh, uh, what is it that doctors are actually demanding? Right. The CBA is about what, 4.5 billion? 4.5 billion. Now, we are dealing with a government that says, you know, we don't have money. But look at the largesse and expenditure in government itself. You know, even pick the travels alone. Just travels alone. Forget even about other things. The Chai and Mandazi is in White House, in State House, whatever. You know, the, 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 the trips. Before you even go to work, ghost workers. Honestly. Of all of, of what doctors are asking, 4.5 billion. Are you telling me that's something we can, we, can, we, can, we can afford? In fact, if the president was serious, and unfortunately now we have to reduce this to the non-performance by the president himself. Because as I said earlier, I'm predicating this on the question of national security. If it's national security, the president cannot sit on the fence and say that, you know, I lead to my, to my, to my, uh, to my CSS and my PSS uh, to, to handle it. This is a serious national issue. The other reason I say government is ignorant, and, and I want to, to just share with Kenyans what a medical intern means in terms of the, the practice of medicine globally. Doctors train for five years at the, at, at, the, at the medical school. On the fourth year is what they call elective year. In that elective year, they actually go and spend a whole year at the, at the hospital, where basically now, that is what we can probably call an apprenticeship practice all right you know so they learn the ropes what to, what to do when they go for fifth year they are now qualified and when they graduate they are actually given the power to go and practice research and read medicine a medical intern is not your typical intern in the social sciences like the way we lawyers will take say a pupil or an intern in our offices we are actually training them on the job but a medical intern is actually a frontline soldier he leads a team these are people who perform some of the most sensitive uh, you know, o operations, All right. you know, they, they do cesarean section, they do, they will open the art, they, they will do all manner of surgeries. Mm -hmm. So these are not your typical Lati intern. It's just that people do not understand in the medical terms what a medical intern means. And I, again, I challenge uh, listeners and including government, mm -hmm. just go research, do basic research. 
I mean, Google is your friend. Just look at what does a medical intern vis-a-vis -vis, uh, an, another type of intern. And people cheaply now bring in engineers, actuarial scientists. They are not the same. It's a technical term actually to describe a fully qualified doctor. Mm -hmm. And by the way, like uh, uh, Beatrice Alachi, and Rebbe Alachi said earlier, some of the senior doctors are actually happy when these interns are, are, are in charge. You know, in the public service, Anki, and let's just be brutally honest here, if there is a group of public, or s public servants who have no excuse to say, oh, I cannot come uh, to rescue you, Sige and I are lawyers. Today, if our clients are arrested, say at midnight, they call me and say, I've been arrested, I'm in a police station. There's absolutely nothing I can do or Sige can do. I can only tell you, let's meet in court in the morning or I come to the police station and negotiate for your bail. All right. The doctor, medical intern, has, does not have that luxury. They are 24-7 on call. Mm -hmm. They're the only guys who can actually drop everything and say, let me go and save what? Save a life. During COVID, thank you. And again, I mean, just give you another example. During COVID, and this is the, the, the seriousness we must treat this subject. During COVID, while other civil servants, including members of parliament here and the rest of us, were in a, the comfort of our homes during the lockdown, mm -hmm. doctors did not have that luxury. These are the guys who are actually on the front line. They were risking their lives. So honestly, we are taking these things so lightly, yet it is really affecting this, the, the, the security of this country from a health perspective. I'll come back to you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Kurokot. Mm -hmm. Allow me to also just keep Honorable Elachi for this one and hear from another very key guest this morning on the round table, Dr. Hillary uh, Sige, oh. Senator Bumet. It's very good to have you. Essentially, before you got here, we got very key and um, uh, tough <coughs> remarks at the beginning. In fact, Honorable Elachi here uh, said that the 13th Parliament has failed Kenyans on this matter. Together with the opening remarks, do you agree with the sentiments um, this morning? Thank you, Doris, and happy to be here again. I'm happy to be here with my senior, uh, Dr. Akul Okot, Beatrice Elachi, and uh, Dr. Uh, Makali. Right. Now, I obviously don't agree. Okay. Especially with the sentiment that the 13th Parliament has failed Kenyans. Uh, it depends on, of course, the context with which she uh, rated that. Uh, the, the doctor's petition? But if it's about the yes. doctor's uh, strike, uh, I don't entirely agree. I don't agree. For two reasons. It's not a matter that is supposed to be resolved by Parliament. And uh, I want to, for a moment agree with uh, Dr. Ekuru in terms of the importance of a doctor, a medical practitioner, an intern, or whatever term we're going to call a doctor. Health is basic. It's one of the basics that we can't afford to play with around. But again, it is not then a benchmark to say the fact that the strike has been going on for now a couple of weeks and it's continuing is a failure on the part of parliament All or right. even the government in the first place why because this is something that um, we have we have had a discussion on this table not once uh, i mean uh, for the last i think three or so weeks uh, where i've been in this uh, round table mm -hmm. with uh, my colleague here it has been a common standard discussion and are we moving forward and um I would say yes. Mm. Why? Because when we began, we had 19 issues on the table about the doctors. It doesn't mean that all of them have been solved, but at least there have been engagements. The only unfortunate thing that has not happened is the option of the compliance with the court order and an open conversation which both parties is keen on having a resolution on a way forward. That has been the sort of a settlement. So we've been in some limbo for now almost two weeks. There hasn't been a meeting that uh, at least has given a breakthrough. Parties are still holding on to their positions. And when we look back and critically analyze the reasons behind the doctor strike, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to say it's historical because that everybody would say, you know what? it is not an excuse to say that it is historical because government is perpetual. We can't say that this is something that we inherited from the previous regime. But uh, frankly speaking, it is something that if we were to isolate issues, mm -hmm. we probably would have had a way forward. We would have progressed. 
One of which, of course, is the fact that we're talking uh, of a CBA that was registered, that was agreed upon, that parties were committed to be bound by it, by the government and, and, and the doctors' yes. uh, union. We are talking about the interns, which my, my colleague here has uh, uh, ably explained the importance, their status within mm -hmm. the medical sector, and the importance which I equally also agree. We are similarly talking about now a shared function between the national government and the county government. For instance, on the issues of the registrars, which is one of the items within the dispute, where we are saying these registrars are employees of county governments. A good number of them are normally allowed a period to go back to school and train. And during that period, they are supposed to be paid. During that period, they are supposed to be trained. They're During that to. period, they are supposed to be uh, sitting for exams. Yes. I spoke yesterday to one of the union representatives who is a practitioner from my county. Okay. And he gave me a historical perspective about it, where he said, though sometimes we are speaking about these issues, I am supposed to be paid by the national government. That is my school fees as a registrar on training. And at the time that he's been allowed to be on that study leave, the national government is supposed to pay their fees. Some of them are in training. Unfortunately, fees is not paid. They don't sit for their exams. What that means, there is already a dispute between this doctor, his employer, that is the county government, and the national government. There is also a very critical aspect which I, I, I was equally shocked. And this is something that we don't bring it out as part of our conversation. A medical doctor who is trained to, of course, treat and take care of the patients in our most vulnerable situation, do not have a medical cover. Okay. Uh, that is one of the issues. Now, do we then uh, generalize and globally say we have failed? No. And so the assessment by um, my colleague uh, Beatrice that the 13th Parliament has failed is outrightly wrong and no, I wouldn't agree because it cannot be a basis of assessment on the non-progress negotiations on the part of the government, whether it's county or national, and the unions. All right, Senator, I want to come back to you, but of course, Dr. Uh, Akuro Court is disagreeing with you. In fact, he started by saying this is uh, pretty much a root of failing. Uh, and you have just said we cannot put this entirely on the government. Mwishimiwa uh, Beatrice Alachi, let's look at this. He's saying it's not historical, indeed. Uh, we're looking at Kenya's first health ministers. If we just start looking back, because we've had ministries. We've had uh, Njoroge Mungai, who was the health minister 1963 to 1964. His successor, Joseph Otiende, 1964 to 1969. Uh, we also had uh, following is Isaac Okero, who was the health minister from 1970 to 1974. And James Osogo came in 1975 to 1979. And those particular first ministers never experienced a doctor's strike. However, we saw the first strike coming in, of course, when Arthur Magugu was the health minister. But that, of course, came in when Moi argued that there was divided loyalties by doctors, uh, which was compromising the services. In fact, uh, Honorable Elachi here said she agrees uh, with that aspect. But because, uh, of course, Senator said it's not entirely hysterical, we're seeing a second strike coming in when Joshua Angatia was minister. That is uh, 1991 to 1994. We can fast forward this to the 14th. Of course, a sitting minister, that is Cleopa Mailu, where we had all this originating from. Honorable Elachi, as we are speaking, we still have Kenyans who are stranded in hospitals. Hence, this does not become an entertainment anymore mm -hmm. and a superiority moment for is IG Kome superior than the doctors? You know, so Kenyans are waiting to hear what next, even as we are talking here, are we going to be seeing doctors arrested? And as far as Kwame is saying, I will deal with you, and doctors are saying, issue an apology to us and make sure that there's some compensation for one of us who was hurt. Kenya's in the middle of a back and forth, Mishimo. Can we look at what is the solution, especially this week? Yes, and uh, uh, well, this is what I'll say. First of all, I'll tell Senator, I have said, and I want to repeat, okay. and, and I'm not saying because of doctors. I am just saying, even starting from where we started from the finance bill, from let 
parliament do its work. If we have done wrong, the president has powers to bring back anything and say, this one, I don't agree with you. But let them just first do their work. Mm. That way, you go on ground with dignity. Today, parliament has no dignity. But then at the same time, on this one, I want to tell the doctors, you see, you have been taken now to another battle that was not your battle. I'll say the way we are telling the Israelites, do not hit back to Iran. <laughs> Don't go that battle because you will lose your battle on this other side. Because now this is another side show that was not even yours. Don't. Don't side take it. show. Yeah, it's a side show. Okay. You are being brought into another engagement when you have not achieved this other engagement. Now, why are you going in this other engagement? For me, I, I will, I'll tell my IG, yes, I know sometimes you get very angry and you will say... Uh, in an angry way, anyone. <laughs> but, uh, but on this one, uh, yes, uh, I don't want you to be ang angered also, because uh, the Constitution gives them the right. But then now we, we, we Kenyans have not said the Bubuzelas and everything. You should also issue. stop lying that they are sleeping on the roads because we haven't seen that. No, no maybe the well, Kenyans uh, can tell us. <laughs> well, uh, sleeping on the road. When you are sleeping on the road, they are tra the traffic. That's what is clear. No, you can't sleep on the road. Okay. You have to sleep. The cars will crash. You. So there's no sleeping on the road. Let's go first. Get out of that one. But then here we are saying, doctors, focus on what you want to achieve and okay. also put it together. And see what 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 w w in your win win. What do you really want to achieve in all in your win win? Mm -hmm. In your win win, because uh, the, the only challenge with us Kenyans, when we see it's becoming very tough, all of us, uh, some of us start tending to to leave the battle to very few, and and you'll find your interns going back to work, and then you'll be left now as doctors, and you'll forget as doctors, you are under the county government. You know, the interns are the ones who are under the national government. Mm -hmm. So they should not forget that. And so when you're going on this table, even when you're looking for what you're looking for, in the end of the day, the county governments must also agree. On the interns, remember it's on national government, we are right. telling national government, you brought in the issue, you sort it out. Put in how you want, and, and going forward, put in a proper framework mm -hmm. so that we mm -hmm. never go back to what we have seen. But on this one of uh, my IG, uh, doctors, get out of there. Focus mm. on your agenda. Mm. Let me hear from uh, Dr. Ali. Dr. Mulu, um, there's another development here. Mm. Members of the public who are not really medics calling to join the doctors on this, uh, you know, strike calling it solidarity. And already, the Azimil Moja, of course, um, recently, mm. uh, one Kenya through Mr. Kalonzo Council, Honorable Kalonzo Msioka, had hinted on um, the coalition. Uh, joining the doctors on the streets should their plight not be arrested. But Kome says this will not be allowed. <laughs> you know, I think I think Kome has more problems in his place than that. But, but should they ask me to join the medics to start with? <laughs> <laughs> for me, I think from where you see it. But here, demonstration is only exclusive to the people yeah, yeah, affected. You, you know, the thing is, the people who are suffering are Kenyans. So mm -hmm. if Kenyans can join the mendics so that mendics go back to hospital and treat them, yeah. let it be so. Okay. Because what, what you're saying basically <laughs> is that, uh, you know, this matter of uh, Dr. Strike has really taken all the debate now. You know, when you look at all the papers, you look at, you know, on television, it's, it's actually yes. at the center of all the debates. Yes. And I think the fact that it has been sustained for the last almost three, three, four weeks, serious debate, it says it's a very serious matter to it Kenyans. Is. Uh, and uh, I think any right-thinking Kenyan should sit back, reflect, and say, we'll do all what it takes to make sure that these guys are back to the hospitals. To me, the argument about whether they are in dance or doctors, that's technical. Okay. I'm sure my mother doesn't want care whether you are in dance or what. What she wants is medicine when she goes to the hospital. After some, the rights a prescription. That, and she will be, you know, some of them, uh, let me tell you what happens to Kenyans. I remember when I was a young boy, uh, my mother used to believe that I can only be cured when I get an injection. Okay. So, <laughs> so when the doctor came to our home, because used to have those, you know, in the old days, Kenya was good. You would even get some med medics visiting our homes for, they would inject you, give some <laughs> drugs. So, there are Kenyans who believe, so long as I'm just in front of a doctor, 
And I know this is it. And the doctor is anybody from clinical, anybody who is a white coat mm. to them. Mm. It doesn't matter whether you have your degrees or not. So as long as you are in a white coat, mm. they are cured. <laughs> so so we are saying they want to go, when they go to the, my public hospital, Kitwe General Hospital, level four, that I will go get by, by get to a room where I, because uh, it's, it's examination room. Mm -hmm. I will be explaining to somebody that I, I'm, I have a headache <clears throat> or I'm having a running uh, stomach. Somebody will write some drugs for me and I go. That's what Kenyans want. And that's what we are, we are telling the CS and the, the president. Now I think it's it getting to a level. And I said, little, I think last week we were here with this game. Yes. And I said, when this matter now has reached, it requires leadership. And this leadership will come from the highest office in this land, mm -hmm. not, not the CS. Uh, you have heard many Kenyans saying, from, the, from their own assessment, the CS is not up to the task. Mm. And the best you could do is actually uh, resign from, or, or, or be redeployed to another ministry. Kenyans okay. have said it. It's not Bakari saying. Kenyans have said it. So, so what you're saying is, what it is now, the president, just as he claims to be providing leadership and not populism, I think time has come now when he needs to pro give, provide that leadership mm -hmm. by making hard decisions on this matter of, mm -hmm. of doctors. All right, I want to take a very short breather. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, Dr. I'll come back with you after the break. Mm -hmm. But uh, speaking of the backstops with the president and leadership is required at this point, um, gentlemen and ladies, I take a very short breather. President William Ruto is not silent on the matter. In fact, he already broke his silence on the matter. But I'll quote what the president said. He said, we must be honest with ourselves. And the truth is that we must live within our means. We can't borrow money to pay salaries. Let us live according to our means. I will come back with your responses on the same. Remember in 2017, it took uh, President Uru Kenyatta to intervene. Um, and of course, we look at the details of how have we handled this as a country and what should be done. At KTN News, throughout the social media platforms, also your feedback is appreciated. We'll be right back.